weekend, there continued to be protests really across the country as it relates to what's happening in the Middle East. And uh, yes, there have been uh, pro-Israel gatherings. And yes, there have been pro-Palestine gatherings. And yes, there have been what I could only characterize as pro-Hamas gatherings. And there was a, a, a protest, we'll call it so far, in, in Seattle, in Westlake Park, that I don't know if the media in Seattle huddled together and said, hey, how do we want to cover this? Because it's the only thing I can think of, because the coverage of this, what was billed as a pro-Palestine protest, was so eerily similar between three TV stations, King, Como, and Fox 13, my old employer. So much so, and I want to start by just showing you a headline comparison. And this isn't, I'll preface this by saying, sometimes you see the same headline in different news publications because what it is is an article from the Associated Press. It's a wire service. So publications subscribe to the wire service, they get the story, and that's why sometimes you see multiple news organizations have the exact same headline. This is not that. We checked. These are not Associated Press articles. So here is how Fox 13 and Como News both chose to characterize a pro-Palestine gathering at Westlake Park in Seattle, the Fox 13 headline. Protesters fill Seattle Park calling for peace, humanitarian aid in Gaza after deadly attacks. The Como News headline. Protesters fill Seattle Park with calls for peace, humanitarian aid in Gaza following deadly attacks. Again, that's not a wire service. Those are articles, the articles, the body of the articles are different, written by two different reporters for two different news stations that ended up having almost the exact same headline. And I know why. It is because you had two reporters for two news stations who bought hook, line, and sinker the narrative that protesters who were members of the Democratic Socialist Party were feeding them. They took it, they regurgitated it out back to their thousands and thousands of viewers across Washington state without challenging it, without questioning it. And I'm going to show that to you detail by detail. So I want to start with simply a montage that we put together of, again, the news stories that aired on this particular protest on Como News, Fox 13, and King 5. And I want you to see and hear for yourself how similar the narratives are that they put out there. Angry, determined, and calling for justice for the people of Palestine. About a thousand demonstrators turned out at Westlake Park. Free, free Protesters filled Seattle's Westlake Park Saturday, calling on the Israeli government to abandon plans for a full-scale ground assault in northern Gaza. Free, free calls for the attacks by Israel on Gaza to stop echoed Saturday throughout the streets of downtown Seattle. Protesters say in addition to a halt in the fighting, they also want Israel to end its occupation of Muslim land. These demonstrators are calling for an end to the bloodshed. It's, it's, a, it's a complete massacre. People at the rally also denounced the U.S. for its ongoing support of Israel saying too many lives have already been lost. With an attack by Israel looming on Gaza, one rally organizer says concern is high, but this is nothing new. Hundreds in the crowd made their voices heard. Four, six, seven, eight. Israel, 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 Israel. They hope that attacks will stop and civilians will stop dying. Israel, 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 Israel. And Connor, this was a large scale rally. This is just one of the rallies like these held this week and more are also planned. Yeah, the rally organizer you just heard from said they're going to keep holding these events in Seattle to make sure that their voices are heard. Now, if you're a viewer of one of those stations, and that's where you primarily get your news, you would leave those stories of the belief that there was nothing at all controversial said or done at that pro-Palestine gathering in downtown Seattle. And that is, of course, not the case. If you watched Fox or watched Como News, you would have also been fed unfiltered talking points from a uh, representative for the Democratic Socialists of America. In fact, those two stations not only chose to have the featured person in their stories be this individual who's a Democratic Socialist, which is really just a socialist in Seattle, but they also chose the exact same soundbite to feed to their viewers. And it's sad to see ordinary Israeli civilians that get killed. That shouldn't have happened, in my opinion. And also, there shouldn't be ordinary working class Palestinians being killed either. 
Now, that's a very reasonable uh, talking point for this democratic socialist to say, yeah, it's sad to see civilians killed no matter which side they're on. But of course, the news stations who covered that sanitized the views of democratic socialists and didn't push back to many other assertions that were made on camera and during this protest. I wanna play just a few instances in these stories where there were comments or claims or video that the reporters did not push back against at all. The demonstrators holding signs that read Free Palestine. The crowd demanded the focus be on restoring human rights to the people of Gaza and providing humanitarian aid to the war-torn region. People at the rally also denounced the U.S. for its ongoing support of Israel, saying too many lives have already been lost. Settlers have been rejoicing massacres. Shame! Settlers have been rejoicing massacres. Shame. Settlers have been rejoicing massacres. Shame. And of course, that's an individual referring to Israelis who pro-Palestinian people say are settlers. And they're saying Israelis are rejoicing massacres of Palestinian civilians. Now, did the reporter on the story go up to that individual and say, hey, what about individuals who've been at rallies like this one who are rejoicing the massacres of Hamas? No, of course not. You also saw in that clip there, it was uh, from Como News, where they said that protesters were holding signs that said, free Palestine. It was all just love and joy and peace. They didn't know that there were also signs, many of them at this particular protest, that said resistance is justified when people are occupied. So there were signs that were blatantly supporting the actions of Hamas. And by I mean the actions of Hamas, the terrorism of Hamas, the rape of women the rape of young uh, girls, the murder of babies. Now, I'd also say, in addition to, again, and, and the primary uh, overarching issue here, if there had been, look, there is a side of this and a side at the pro-Palestine rally that I take no issue with, and I think a reasonable person would take no issue with, the assertion that you have mm, a million plus people in Gaza, uh, many of them families, women and children who've been told to evacuate to southern Gaza on a timeline that's simply not realistic. And so it's certainly fine for people to come out and say, hey, we don't want civilian casualties. What happened in Israel was, was heartbreaking, and we don't want uh, women and children in Gaza to be injured either. The issue is absolutely no pushback from any of the reporters. If you watch their stories, you would simply believe that these are all a bunch of peace-loving individuals. The issue is these reporters either didn't care to do their homework on some of the people who they featured in their stories, uh, or they just didn't have the time, or they didn't have the will to do it. They didn't want to do it because they have a particular bias. So in particular, there was one woman who made cameos in two of the stories. Uh, in one of the stories, she was simply shown on video. Uh, we can uh, show you guys side by side. In the other one, in a King 5 story, she was actually interviewed. Here's the clip of her being interviewed by King 5. I've been concerned for over 75 years during this occupation, so this is something that unfortunately we are used to, um, and that's why we're out in the street today. So here you have this woman put forth by King Five as an absolutely sympathetic figure. Here you have this woman at this protest in Westlake Park that all three of these media outlets have made out to be this total peace-loving crowd who just doesn't want innocent people to get hurt. The issue is that just a few days before this particular protest, that exact woman was a featured speaker at a protest at the University of Washington where the flyers for that protest celebrated and featured their paragliders from Hamas who paraglided in to a music festival and slaughtered innocent civilians. And that exact woman, who again was a featured speaker at that event, celebrated, celebrated the rebellion. I promise you, Palestine will be free! Intifada! Intifada! Long live Intifada! So now, with that knowledge under your belt, doesn't featuring her at, in coverage of a protest where you've made all these people out to be pacifists, doesn't that undermine your reporting? Doesn't that change entirely the um, 
the, the feeling of your reporting, the feeling of your stories that you've put forth of these are just a bunch of people who don't want any more innocent individuals killed. And then you have a soundbite with a woman who was just days earlier at the University of Washington at a rally that was explicitly celebrating Hamas terrorists and calling for an infantata. I mean, this is either a complete um, dereliction of duty when it comes to these journalists um, or it is bias. I tend to think it's just absolute laziness and it's just the type of reporting where you go somewhere and you point a camera and you regurgitate exactly what people say and you don't push back at all. Either way, it's incredibly dangerous. It's incredibly embarrassing for the state of journalism. And it's also spreading to hundreds of thousands of households in Washington state, a completely false and, and watered down and sanitized narrative of what is happening in the Middle East. And it is not just the, the TV stations that are doing this. I looked on the Seattle Times today and they have a whole section on the Seattle Times that is dedicated to the Hamas-Israel war. And these are, this isn't changed at all, I took a screen grab of it. Right now they're featuring four stories. All of them have an anti-Israel bend or a pro-Gaza bend. Twins born in Gaza after their mother flees to the south. And again, I, I, I feel bad for civilians caught up in a humanitarian crisis for them. But that is a story that's meant to be sympathetic toward Palestinians. The next headline, Israel vows to destroy Hamas. What happens to Gaza at the war's end? The next one, Biden warns Israel not to occupy Gaza. The next one, humanitarian aid is stuck at Gaza-Egypt border as Israel siege strains hospitals and water supply. And, and really, none of this is a particular surprise. The Seattle media has been sanitizing absolute uh, fringe views on the left for some time. Here you have a gathering of socialists in Seattle who are excusing atrocities. Well, the Seattle media has been sanitizing the views of, of socialists in Seattle for years and years and years. Be it, you know, the, the BLM movement and marches where the Seattle media didn't push back against clear crimes, against uh, violence and disorder because it was done in the name of a cause that they agreed with. And so this is really no surprise that the Seattle media would turn around and the same group of socialists who uh, cause chaos and violence on the streets of Seattle all the time. I mean, look at what they did in 2020. It's some of the same people in the crowd, by the way, that the Seattle media would absolutely downplay it, would cherry pick and choose what signs to show, you know, the peaceful signs, free Palestine, not the signs that saying the resistance, the Hamas terror attacks were justified. So it's either just blatant bias, which is probably part of it. I think a lot of it is a lack of understanding of world events, uh, reporters who just don't know any better and who are just approaching their, their job in the absolute laziest and easiest way possible. Let's point a camera and let's just say what's on it. But the result is the same. Whether it's incompetence or bias, the result is the same. The result is a populace in Washington state getting their news and information from these TV stations, from these newspapers that are all covering it in the same way, that are all covering it in a deeply dishonest way. And so I wanted to show you, because I'm sure even if you watch one of those stations, you didn't see the coverage of all the stations compared in that way and to see how similar, how similar and how wrong they actually were.